everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this graduation cap card. And basically all it is, is the reverse of this diamond easel card that I've done. So there is the one that I shared a few weeks ago now. Many of you have been making that one. And basically I've done exactly the same thing, but I've just flipped it around. And it has the same mechanism as the... I think it was pop-up easel or pop-up diamond card that I done. So both of those different card styles. So if you haven't seen this one and you like the look of this one, I will link that that one up because you could easily have the cap where this piece is, just like this one. And I will also share the one that has more of a kind of a spring on it. You could also add the cap to that as well. So you've got three options. Plus I've already done, two years ago, I done the graduation explosion box, which was in the shape of a cap. And that's been really, really popular. And lots of you have been enjoying that one as well, but I never done anything for graduation last year. So there's lots of graduations obviously going on and you know it's the season now with that all happening so I thought I would do one this is really easy to do I think it's come out really nicely so you lift it up and that's you can kind of see how it all works together there so that is purely decorative that just pops in there and then you can write your message it folds flat it will fit in a six by six envelope and then on the back there you've got lots of room to write your message alternatively you could put card in here you could actually have that whole piece in here and have your message but you would kind of see some of it so yeah it's entirely up to you there's plenty of space anyway but doesn't that look really cool I'll show you how to make your tassel and then I've just used some of the gold red cardstock there and yeah I think it looks really good so let's make it okay so I've got this baker's twine here which I picked up from the works no sorry this was from the range it's just the baker's twine. You've got five different colours there. I'm going to use the black and white. Then I have die cut the celebrate and these stars are just from my own stash. The circle is the same circle I used when I made the explosion box and this is the set very smallest of my circle dies. So that's the one I've used there. And this celebrate was part of a celebration die set. You've got celebrate amazing you. So they're really nice, it's a lovely font, you can see there. And all I've done is I've die cut everything with some fun foam as well. So I pick up the, the kind of packs of fun foam from the range, you get all different colours, and I just use the black there. So I've die cut it in the gold, and then I've just die cut one piece of the foam, and it just gives you a really nice dimension to your sentiments. And you can see there just how much it's lifted off. So really like that, I do that a lot, to be honest. Okay, so you are going to need one piece of, uh, so you basically want a six by six card blank, but I wanted black and I don't have any black card blanks, so I've cut this my own. Now I only had black A4 card size, so the length of that is just under 12 inches. So this card is actually going to be five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. So I know there's probably going to be quite a few of you, especially in the UK, that will have this same issue with me. I don't have a lot of coloured card blanks. Mine are usually just white or maybe cream and things like that. So if you're using A4, you want to cut some cardstock to five and seven eighths of an inch by your um, 11 and three quarters, which is your A4 default. Obviously anybody else, you would have to cut down some 12 by 12 paper, or if you're using letter card size or letter, yeah, letter paper size, yours would be 11. So yours would be a five and a half by five and a half card base so you can do it that way as well It'll just be a little bit smaller so if you do want to use your letter paper then you'll want yours to be five and a half by 11 but for us here in the UK you want a piece that is your A4 standard length by five and seven eighths of an inch so along the longest side you've got your first score line at five and seven eighths so that's our halfway okay and then you're going to score another one at nine I believe it was just down there Okay, so it's kind of halfway. It doesn't really matter with the easel um, part, whether it's you know halfway or slightly off, it really doesn't make any difference. But now you can fold it in half and you'll see it will line up perfectly. So like I said, that's five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. You would have scored at five and a half and then you will want to score at two and three quarters, which will give you your halfway. So you can score at two and three quarters and then five and a half. Okay. So I'm just going to burnish those ones there. So right now we've just got this normal easel card. Okay, next open it up so you've got your fold facing you. Okay, and then we're going to do 
our triangles going in here and then out to here. So what we need to do is just mark our halfway points. So you want to mark halfway along that middle score line. So it doesn't matter what size you're using, you want to mark halfway. Now because ours is five and seven eighths, you just want to mark just slightly shy of three. Again, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference, but just slightly there, I've just popped my pencil mark at just under three. We're then going to be joining this score line here, this corner up to there and this corner up to there. Then in this section here, along each of these sides, again, you want to mark the halfway. So, you know, just around about three. And again, here. So again, whatever you're using, just make sure you mark the halfway. And now we're going to score from there to there and there to there. Okay. Okay, now you can score right across if you want, just make sure that you go through that middle point. That's why I do, I do each one differently because I'm working slightly off just purely because of the size of this. But if it is, say, a, a bang on six by six piece, then you could just go right across there. Okay, so that is our scoring there. Then all you need to do is this very bottom one is you want to mark again halfway, so around about three, and you're going to actually cut, so you don't need to score, you want to do a pencil mark, or a pencil line even, from there and there, and you're going to cut that one. Okay, so that's what you should have, and then these score lines you're going to create mountain folds, so that one there, and that one there, and again mountain folds with the back two, like so. So those are mountain, these ones will then be in the valley, fold position, fold it all in together and you will have your card. Okay, and now this piece, when you pop it into that easel position, you fold it down like so, it will actually lie against that fold and that is how we're going to have the card. Then you want a piece that's four and three quarters by four and three quarters and that is going to stick right over there. Okay, like so. You want to line up really these left and right corners here with the ones over there. It's going to overhang, that's what you want it to do, you want it to cover. So if I turn upside down here you probably can just make out there is the actual piece underneath and you can see how much it overhangs, about a quarter of an inch overhang, okay, like so. So what I would say to do is if you add glue all on the bottom half of that triangle, so I'm just going to run some glue all along here and just turn it over. Pop that down and just make sure you have that equal overhang like so. It should all lie nice and flat. Okay, so now when you bring it up, just let it rest against that, and that is where your kind of stopper is going to be. You can see exactly, it's got a really nice shape to it. I like this, it's really strong as well. Okay, so next we just need to add our mats and layers on the front and I've got this piece here for the cap so this measures four by four I believe yeah four by four and then I've also done a piece of foam foam fun foam underneath okay so you can just see how thick that is there okay so again I'm just going to stick that down on top and that will just start to give you your graduation cap look really Lie the whole thing down and again this should give you a nice even about a quarter of an inch border or overhang <laughs> you can see there just get rid of my glue so then I've got these mats and layers so this one is going on the front and this is five and five and five eighths of an inch by two and three quarters and that one is going to stick directly down in that bottom section Again, you should have a nice border like so. So I'm going to stick that one down. Okay, there's that one. And then this one here, I'm going to stick on some fun foam. And this is the one that's going to start to create our stopper. So this piece measures one and a half by five and one eighth. And that one is going to, if you bring your easel kind of into position and then you just want to make sure that you get a nice oh, little border on the front piece here, like so. Okay, and then that one will clip in there. 
probably need to burnish. I didn't say actually, yeah, because you don't want it to be as springy as it is. So just burnish. There we go. And now it will just sit in there like so. And then this piece, I, again, I'm going to add some foam. And this one measures one and a quarter by four and seven eighths of an inch. So again, just going to take my backing off and just focus on your border, make sure that's all even, like so. And then I've got all these bits to decorate, so I'm going to stick my Celebrate down there. This just, I think, really does pull it all together really nicely. And then I've got my four stars. I'm going to go in like so. I should have one more, which looks like I've dropped it on the floor, so we'll find that in a second. And then I've got my circle, and I'm going to show you how to make the tassel once I've stuck all this down. Okay, I still can't find the other star, so I will look for that in a minute, but I just want to get this all put together. So I'm just going to unravel this black and white twine. And just with my three fingers here, have your end right at the bottom, because that will actually become one of the tassels, and just wrap it around a few times. It depends how thick you want your tassel, really. So I like mine quite thick. So... I've gone and done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, about twelve, okay, and then finish again at the bottom, no, that's fine, then go up and you want to be at the top, bunch it all together, okay, and then come down about a quarter of an inch and just start wrapping around like so, and then what I've done is got some glue just all around there, and you want to start to kind of stick that down so it doesn't come undone, like so. And then from the back, again, add a blob of glue. You're going to add hot glue to this eventually and just kind of have it sticking up, okay? Like so. so just hold that there a second and make sure that glue all sets. Like I said, once you add your hot glue to it as well, that will really fix it in place. And then I'm just going to turn it over and then all of these pieces on the bottom, you just want to cut. And there is your tassels. Easy peasy. And then you want to cut some off. And depending on how much you want overhanging, if I bring this one in here, you'll see I've got, I've stuck hot glue under there, so that doesn't move, that's stuck there. But I've got about, bearing in mind it goes underneath there, it's about two inches. So I'm just going to double up like so and just get rid of the excess there because we can trim this again in a moment and where you've stuck it on the back you just want to kind of add that to it so I'm just going to pop another bit of glue and just stick that end so now you've got this effect here now if you want to cut all those little loops there you can I'm just going to leave mine as they are but next I'm going to grab my hot glue okay I've turned my hot glue off so I'm just going to use this glue for the minute because it will still work and I'm just going to add nice blob of it all on the back there and I stick it about halfway down okay like so and then this comes into the middle and you're going to stick your circle as centered as you can get it so again I'm just going to trim that now like so that glue's already starting to dry and then that is going to go and cover the ends, but you just want to make sure you do get it really nice and centred. So again, a nice amount of glue. I think that's about right. Just let that all stick down. There you have it. I think they look really, really good. I love this style. And like I said, it will work on those other diamond cards that I've shared as well. So do go and check them out. There will also be a playlist at the end. You'll be able to look at those and I will link them on my blog as well. Um, but yeah, I think they look great. You can do them any colours. You can go to town with them, personalise them with their name here. You could have your, you know, your messages and stuff actually on the cap. There's, there's so many ways to decorate them. I will be back uh, Sunday with my scrapbook layout and Monday with another fun tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.